The following video is an excerpt from my Nikon ZF tutorial course. It's going to take you through how to customize your controls and your displays in the Nikon ZF. Two great ways to really get more out of this camera. So if you like this video and you want to see more about how to use the ZF, including all of the menu walkthroughs and the focus and exposure settings, you can check out that full course at photocourses.link slash Nikon and use the code TUBE20 for 20% off that course. For our final lesson here, we're gonna look at some additional customization options, customizing our displays for both shooting and playback, and then also customizing our camera controls, all of the buttons, dials, and rings to make that camera work for us. The Nikon ZF has seven customizable controls. And that number can be expanded further with lenses that have function buttons. All of these can be programmed to different functions and those available functions are going to depend on which control you're using. You can see the current camera setup and then program it in the custom settings menu. Custom settings F2 for shooting mode, custom settings F3 for playback mode, and custom settings G2 for movie mode. Anytime you want a reminder of what your controls do, this is where you can come. Or if you want to change how something is set up, you'll also come into these menus. You can just tap on or highlight and press OK to see what these functions are. Different functions are available for each control, and this is going to vary between shooting, playback, and movie modes. For example, you will see different functions available for the Lens FN button, and the video recording button. So it's gonna require that you kind of go through each control to see what's available for that control. And there are some things to note when programming your controls. Some functions act as a press and release button for that function, while others act as a press and hold, and then use the command dial to change that function, like white balance. You're gonna press and hold that button, and then use the command dial to change your white balance. And these functions are grouped in the list, so you kind of know which ones are press and release and which ones are press and use the command dial. Some functions are also press to turn on and press again to turn off. These are indicated by hold next to the function name. Hold does not mean that you need to press and hold these controls. What it means is that when you press and release it, it's going to hold that function until you press and release it again. They will, however, be reset when you cycle the camera power. Some controls can also be disabled by selecting none for the function. Like the menus, spend some time using your camera and determine which settings you want to be able to change just by pushing a button and what you want the buttons to do in each mode. Still photography, playback, or video. Feel free to reprogram these as time goes on. It's gonna change. And that's the great thing about having this kind of customization. Just have a purpose for each camera control. You can see an example of how I have my controls currently set up in the lesson text. You can also use the monitor touchscreen as an additional control when looking through the viewfinder. We looked at that in the focusing lesson. But remember, that's going to be in the custom settings F4 touch FN menu. Assign touch FN is where you'll choose what that touch screen is going to do when you're looking through the viewfinder. And then touch FN area is going to set which area of the monitor is active for touch in both horizontal and vertical orientations. Looking at some of the other custom settings, F6, reverse dial rotation. If you have this on, that will reverse the command dial directions when using the command dials for exposure compensation and or shutter speed and aperture. F7, release button to use dial. Going back to our example of using the FN button for white balance, where you have to press and hold the FN button and then use the command dial to change your white balance. If you set this to on, you don't need to hold that button. You just press the front FN button, release it, 
And then you can use the command dials to change the white balance. And then you press that button again to go back into regular shooting mode. Because holding a button down while rotating the command dials, that can be a difficult maneuver to pull off. So if you have difficulty holding a button while rotating the command dials, turn this on. F11 control ring response, that's for lenses that have a control ring, it's set to high by default, which I find makes the control ring a little too touchy, way too responsive for me to adjust the function that I have assigned to it, which is aperture. It changes my aperture way too fast when I rotate that control ring, so I set this to low. F12, switch focus control ring rolls. That's going to swap what is set for focus ring and control ring. The lens zoom ring is always going to be used to zoom the lens. Those were our controls. Let's look at some ways to customize our displays. D9 view mode for photo live view. We referenced this earlier. This allows you to set whether or not you want your exposure and image settings previewed in the live view. Show effects of settings. This is going to let you see how your picture control, white balance, and exposure settings are going to affect your final processed photo. What you see in the live view here is not what your raw photo will look like if you're recording raw. If you're working with studio strobes, you can press the multi-selector right and choose only when flash is not used to be able to see your composition better in dark studio environments. Adjust for ease of viewing will give you more of a DSLR style preview in the displays where you're just looking at the scene without any picture styling settings applied, which you may want to do if you are only recording the raw file format. Pressing the multi-selector right will let you select auto or custom. Custom lets you choose which settings are previewed and how. D10, starlight view for photo live view. This is going to brighten the scene in front of you, which we saw earlier can help you focus in dark scenes, but it's also used to help you compose in dark scenes, like if you do astrophotography. Depending on how dark the scene is, it may take a few seconds for the live view to settle to something that's usable. So just don't move the camera around too fast. This requires that you move the camera, you compose quite slowly. D11, warm display colors. You can use this option to reduce the strain on your eyes and or preserve your night vision in dark environments. All of the symbology, the menus, and all of the overlays on the screens are going to turn an orange red color. And there are two mode options in this menu. Mode one enables this red symbology for shooting mode, the menus, and playback mode. The live view, the scene that you see through the screen is also going to be in warm tones. And this is my preference to get the full benefits of this mode. You're just seeing a monochrome image through the viewfinder. It's just going to be in warm tones rather than black and white. Mode two is like mode one, except that the live view preview, the scene in front of you is not going to be altered. That is still going to be in normal color, but all of the other symbols on the screen are going to be that red color. You can also change the brightness of the warm display setting in this menu for when you enable it. D14 image frame, if enabled, will show you a very thin white border around the frame in both the viewfinder and the monitor. You can disable it if you want to, but I find this helps frame the image as the name implies. D15 grid type is where you'll choose the type of grid overlay that you want to see on the screen if it is enabled in the D17 or D18 display options that we'll look at in just a minute. There are five options here. You'll see examples of each. The three by three rule of thirds is probably the most popular. D16 virtual horizon type, like grid type, is where you'll choose the type of virtual horizon if it's enabled for your displays. 
Type A will show the levels in the center of the screen, and Type B will move them off to the side and the bottom. You can customize your displays for photo mode in D17 and D18, and video mode in G15 and G16. Whatever you have set here, this is what's going to happen when you press the display button when either looking at the monitor or looking through the viewfinder. When you press the display button, your screens, your displays are going to cycle through different overlays. And this is where you'll customize those overlays. You can have up to five different overlays for the monitor and four for the viewfinder. Disable the display options that you don't want by highlighting them and pressing OK. And you can customize the displays that you do want by highlighting those and pressing the multi-selector right. You'll see a preview of what that display is going to look like as you check or uncheck the available options. Simple is just going to show you your basic shooting mode, exposure information, battery, and shots remaining, while detail is going to show you additional information all over the screen, like your focus, shooting, and image settings. Enabling touch controls will display the touchscreen options available to you while you're shooting by having a box around those touchscreen options. Virtual Horizon will display the Virtual Horizon type selected in D16. Histogram is going to show you a small histogram in the lower right. This is called brightness information in the video custom settings. Framing Grid enables the grid overlay set in D15. Center Indicator displays some crosshairs in the center of the screen if you need to reference the exact center. And then Center Weighted Area will show you the size of the center weighted metering area that is set in the B4 custom setting. This option is not available for the video modes. And finally, F8 reverse indicators, that's going to reverse flip how the exposure metering scale looks in your displays.